everybody welcome back to the jewelry spot i'm val for anybody new to my channel i make content dealing with uh, jewelry making and my etsy shop and sometimes i uh, venture off into uh, different things that can be found on amazon i'm an amazon associate uh, this video is all about etsy and uh, my journey so i'm gonna begin with a little bit of a kind of an introduction for anybody that doesn't know or maybe has forgotten about my Etsy journey. So I started in 2019. In July, it'll be three years uh, since I started my Etsy shop and my YouTube channel. Well, I um, didn't have many sales for the first two years at all. Then last year, I started making hoop earrings and they really took off. When I say that, I didn't make a million sales last year. I started to see growth little by little by little. I do want to make sure that I um, explain that the growth is not, uh, mine, didn't, mine didn't skyrocket. It took lots of work and, um, and I'm only sharing my experience. Everyone else is, you know, sure, surely can be different. Everyone is an individual. So I made hoop earrings. That is what, what got me my first success on Etsy, some consistent sales. It's been my hoop earrings. I do have other earrings in the shop, like metal earrings, but the hoops seem to be the things that are the most popular. So it kind of became a hoop earring shop. And um, what, 12 months later, <laughs> I've got um, I've got 510 sales. I would say the first couple of years when I really didn't know what I was doing or when I was not consistent at all, I. Um, I only had maybe, I don't think last June I had 20, I don't think I had 30 sales last June when I started. So I'm going to talk to you about six things that helped me to make 500 sales on Etsy. Um, the first thing, good photos. You know, since it's um, an e-commerce shop, people can't pick up your item. They can't try on your your items or anything like that. So you have to do a really good job of photos. And that's what helped me. That's just what got my foot in the door last year. I had a um, kind of a plain wooden background and I um, placed three earrings on it. And it was in the middle of the day, which was natural light. The natural light pictures really, really look good. Um, you don't have to do a lot of embellishing with your, with your camera, it's just, kind of um, just really good light so I noticed that I got more more views in the shop with that one picture and so I kind I replicated it what I did was um, I just tried to make more hoops and bigger hoops and then had that same background and it worked so I got a few more sales with that so definitely have the best pictures you can um, you don't want to have pictures that uh, have too much in the background because you want your product to stand out and so have kind of a a nice background sometimes I see people do different things like uh, have maybe greenery photos I mean uh, like flowers in their shop I've seen people do I don't know make pretty tile or sometimes just plain white backgrounds do very very well but I think I found um, what works for me, and that's that, that wood background. I've also got like wood that's kind of painted uh, white, and so just different types of backgrounds like that. Um, when you have an Etsy shop, you have all those spots for like 10 different photos for each listing. And so you can, the first picture is the most important because that's what grabs someone's attention. And then you can add different different pictures after that. Okay, number two, have multiple listings. When I began my Etsy shop, in my head, I kept hearing people say, you need a hundred items in your shop. And um, what I've learned is that I don't think there's any special number, but my strategy definitely is to, to have lots of things out there. Right now I'm in the 240s, about 245 items in the shop. Um, and then sometimes 
they will sell out and I have to renew the listing when I've made some more product. So I would say that multiple listings is number two. You need to have lots of things in your store for people to choose from. Uh, my thought behind that is you just have more chances to be found when you have lots of products. And I did a little bit of research. Um, I looked at top stores. The top stores on Etsy have, you know, hundreds of listings. And in some cases, thousands of listings for those really big shops or stores. So number two, definitely, um, this is what worked for me, having multiple listings. Number three, um, I talked a little bit about that, niching down have, having a, like a focus. My focus became hoop, uh, hoop earrings. That's what grabbed the customer and made them want to come to the shop. And then I also have branched out since then and I have purchased um, some materials to make really, really pretty metal earrings, like copper, bronze, and silver. And so what got me in the door though, that was niching down and that was with the hoop earrings. Um, in general, it's an earring shop, so you might find some dangling earrings in there. You definitely will find lots of hoops, and so I think it all works together well, but um, kind of niching down and finding your target market, your target uh, product, that definitely helps. Consistency, um, that's number four. You want to stay busy in your Etsy shop. I guess this triggers the algorithm. It lets Etsy know that you are uh, present, that you are uh, working in your shop, you're improving your shop, uh, you're consistent in your, stop, in your shop. And so number four is consistency. Um, I have said in the past I wanted to add things daily. Uh, sometimes life can get overwhelming. You know, you have um, family, you have work or what have you. So it might not be possible to do a listing every single day, but uh, maybe you pick one day a week where you put five things in the shop or, you know, one day in the week where you put three things in the shop. Um, making titles or, or redoing titles, revamping things that might not have worked in the past. Like maybe I have a great picture, but I didn't have great titles and that will throw off the SEO, the search engine optimization. And so um, kind of just being present, um, working in your shop every day, letting Etsy know that you are consistent. You know, you have consistent behavior for a shop owner. Uh, let's see, number five, not giving up. That has helped me um, even times when I wanted to give up or didn't think that um, I would have lots of success or have any success. Um, I pulled through. I said, well, these other shops can do this. And you know, I, I have a product and I can do this too. And the thing is that what, um, what helped me the most was seeing that I could do it, not necessarily paying attention to someone else. I was just consistent and you know, I knew I had something pretty to share and that somebody out there would want it. And that's what happened. Uh, I was just consistent and did not give up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't give up and I kept um, producing things, kept trying to make things. Um, if I would get stagnant for a second, I would think for a few days and then I would come sit at my, my table in my shop and then just stop figure, start to figure out what's a new design I can create or how can I make this one, this old design better? So definitely not giving up helped. And number six, Etsy ads. Um, this the Etsy ads, uh, you pay for those when somebody clicks on your ad. I believe that's how it works. Um, I'm still learning how everything works. I would not call myself a beginner quite, but I would say I'm kind of in the middle of my Etsy journey. Still trying to learn everything, uh, the data, how to read all of the data and everything like that. So um, it's definitely, I think Etsy ads have definitely helped me. So what happens is you can spend a certain amount of your budget every day on ads. And if someone clicks on your ads that Etsy promotes, you, um, 
you will, they, you know, if they click on it and purchase it, then you have to pay a certain amount. So you can have a budget of $10 a day. You can have a budget of $100 a day. I was looking at another um, very popular shop, very, very successful shop in the, um, in the niche of like dog collars, pets, that niche uh, that he had, I think he said he spent $2,000 a day on his budget. So obviously he's a huge shop and he can afford to do that. But I have noticed that when I increase my budget for Matsy shop, it seems like more sales come from that. Of course it does cost, but I, it's, I'm trying to begin a business, you know, grow a brand. So you have to spend money in order to make it. And so it's kind of all built into, it's not like it's coming straight out of my pocket. It's just coming from my profit that I've made. And so it's like reinvesting your money or your profit back into the business when you buy ads. So um, I think I started out with $3 a day. I kind of moved to $5 a day back in April. Now I've tried $7 a day. Now that's not on every single item. That's on my most popular listings that I've got the $7 a day budget for ads. And what happens is the, um, well, the thought is that the more ads, um, well, the more money you spend on your ad budget, that Etsy will promote your items. Well, that doesn't work for everybody. I've seen several creators, um, Etsy shop owners say that, you know, they turned on their ads for a certain amount and they were actually losing money and that their traffic is organic. You know, people are just coming because they've got a nice product and great pictures. So I can only speak for myself. It seems like whenever I increase my, my ads, um, I get more sales. So at this moment right now, I am at 510 sales. I'm excited and I, kept, I keep thinking to myself, Wow, could I get to a thousand by uh, the end of the year? So I have to remember that it took me about a year to get to 500. And so I just, my hope for the, sh the business is that, um, that I can scale it and grow it and it will turn larger. You know, um, my husband tells me not to call it a small business. He says, don't call it a small business. Just, you have a business. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, to make it larger. Um, and so those are the, the dreams I have for it. So to recap, um, the six things that helped me to be successful and to get my first 500 sales on Etsy. Number one, good photos. Number two, multiple listings. Number three, niching down. Number four, consistency. Number five, not giving up. And number six, Etsy ads. I hope this video has been valuable for you. Um, a lot of times we might wonder when we try to begin a journey like this, is there room for me? Am I really gonna make money at this? Well, I think it's important to search your heart. Is this something you like to do? You know, are you out for making money? Of course, everyone is that starts a business. And also it's important to like what you do. And so I um, maybe did start this as a hobby, but definitely, it turned into a business. And so it is something I like to do and uh, something I'd like to watch grow. And so I'm gonna end by showing you just a, a little bit of my shop and then um, hopefully you'll, you'll watch my next videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.